right, hello everyone. I kind of wanted to do a video about, about my uh, new rock board. It's a Sync 5.3. Um, I like it. do have some pros and cons. I'll go over all that. Um, also some of the questions that I've been getting online from people. Uh, I'll try to make this a pretty quick video. So um, I used to use a Road Cases USA 32 by 16. This is literally like a half an inch too big to fit in that case. Um, I have a soft case with this. It makes it about 10 pounds less than the other case. I wasn't really on the road, although I play every weekend, sometimes twice on the weekends. So I do need um, something, but it's usually just in my car and, and then, you know, short trips in and out of the bar. So it's not like a big, huge deal, but um, also the hard case was $175 more um, in the future, I would like to maybe consider getting that, but really don't need it. Their hard case has wheels too, which would be kind of cool because it's about 45 pounds, 46 pounds, I think the way it is right now. So um, I also get a lot of questions about how I mounted the microphone stand on here. So I will hopefully try to give a lot of detail on that. No music in this one, no guitar playing, but just a quick overview. All right. So, um, I use a Shure wireless now, the digital wireless. I wasn't liking it at first because it was, um, I was having a lot of, I don't know what to call it. It sounded almost like a, a tremolo um, effect, but I, I finally found that I used the right um, channel or whatever, um, group and channels. It seemed to work better on the four for me. Um, if you look at my rack for, um, turn this on. This is the our PA rack. Um, we do have, you know, two. We have a vocal wireless. We have a uh, um, Wi-Fi, and we have my in-ear wireless. So there could be a lot of interference with wireless. My bass player uses wireless. I'm using you know guitar wireless. So that's you know three wireless units or four wireless units plus the Wi-Fi. So that can add a lot. I go straight into the drop. The drop works excellent for what I use it for. I only need it on about five or six songs a night. Um, just depends on what songs we play. Um, it just works great. I don't use it on anything that would use clean sounds. I don't, it just sounds funky for some reason, but as long as you have distortion, it sounds good. So I go right from the wireless into the drop and then into the input of the Helix. Um, to me, um, it's just easier, although I do forget to turn the drop off sometimes, it is easier for me to use this process rather than having the drop in a separate loop. Um, I think that having the drop in another loop actually adds a lot of noise, noise that I don't want to have. Uh, my Mimic is in loop one and two um, in stereo configuration. Um, it's at the very end of my chain. Um, as a matter of fact, let me turn on the Helix. It's at the very end of the chain, um, right before maybe before the delay, but definitely before the reverb. I just think that, you know, um, you want kind of a cleaner signal going through there. I guess that's the best way to put it. I think reverb or delay might just mess with the mimic for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just in my head. Um, I'm using a Mission Expression pedal, one of the, the green sparkly ones that they just had a, um, they just had, it's a little rough. It's not super, um, uh, I don't know, it's smooth on the outside, but um, doesn't really matter. It looks really cool. It's a I got a spring-loaded one, which I love. Um, everything always goes right back into zero when I'm done. Um, so with this wah pedal or whatever, it works great. Um, and that's it. I don't really use this expression pedal except for maybe some volume because the one in the board, it's, there's such a, a huge sweep across it that it doesn't work for wah-wah and whammy effects, especially when I want to do quick really quick things this one you got to really move your foot a lot to kind of get it in there and of course my helix is locking up when i do this i'll just turn it off and turn it back on all right so um the railing flange that i use this is just a simple railing flange that um, you can get at pretty much any hardware store i just bought the flange two bolts um oh, this one feels loose that's weird with a um, big washer underneath to kind of hold it in, which is a really convenient part about the board that it works there. This wouldn't have worked with like a, uh, um, a pedal train or some a lot of the other boards out there. 
works perfect. Um, so it's just two nut, uh, two bolts with nuts and a big washer. The washer is very big with a small um, center for the for the nut or bolt to go through, um, and then that's just tightened on the other side. To put in, like here's my. Um, you have to kind of make sure. One of the things that I did with this was actually cut off the end because it it fanned out at the end and made it kind of bigger. So I cut off about an, an inch or half an inch at the end. It fits in very smoothly. And then I just use an Allen wrench. It's kind of a bigger one, maybe a five or a six millimeter, and goes in, tightens this up, and the board is very sturdy. So it's not moving at all. Like a drunk person could probably run into this and I don't think they would they would, you know, bend it or knock it over. I think it would it could stand up unless unless it's like a, you know, a super super huge guy. So um, uh, one thing I will say, I do like the holes in the rock board. It helps put all the cables through. Um, some cables run underneath. Um, all my power cables run underneath, but I have a few cables that the ones that go into the mimic and from the drop to the input go underneath. Otherwise, you know they're pretty much on top it's pretty easy to to do all that routing um, the other thing oh so the only thing I don't like about the holes is I wanted to use XLR to go XLR XLR into the mod 3 which is in the back I'll show that in a moment um, I got the one with the XLRs I do wish that it had MIDI because as you can see the only thing I can't run is the MIDI um, right here is the MIDI input and I had to run a cable special just for that it would have been nice if they have one they have one that has the quarter inch jacks but not the MIDI uh, or their quarter inch jacks with MIDI but not XLRs with MIDI only one XLR and I run stereo as you can see the, the green right everything is kind of green and colored runs right into my XR18 um, I'm also kind of green there is where my if you can see the outputs underneath there that go to my um, my Sennheiser for my IEMs. So let's look at the back of this real quick. Um, you can see that it's a really nice and tidy way to have this set up. I actually kind of put these on here to keep it so everything goes to the side. Um, one of the other features that I would say is that I think they could either have a space to move this around a little bit, maybe put it in some other places, or even if it would fit um, on the side here would be nice so you could put them on the, the sides I don't know if that would do the structure or you know have an impact on the structure the other thing is right here as you can see I had to cut this out that's not the board's fault it's really the it's really that I couldn't find any right angled XLRs that were very short there Now I could have moved this around but as you, if you can see right through there um, is where the cables go so it would be hitting those cables as well like I would need to kind of move my helix into a place that I didn't want it to be um, and again I did have to cut the holes anyway just to get the other side of the XLRs through this gap because it's a very narrow and it was maybe like a millimeter on each side that I cut um, I do I used to use this bright switch um, it, it's nice to have a light so I can put my set list on the side and my singer and I can see that but I also used to use it as an extra um, power output there USB output that you could use to charge a phone um, I used it to run my G10 wireless which worked I actually kind of liked it better than the Shure in a lot of ways but um, it was getting to I was getting to not feel very reliable with it um, the Shure now that I found the right settings the Shure has been very reliable and I can power it with I have a, a digital power supply so I'm powering the bright switch, the mimic, the drop, and the sure with one power supply. So, um, you know, somebody said, "Oh, you should get Chad Boston's things." I, I just don't use the outputs that much, so I only really needed to have the ones labeled that I that I want, and I have a nice label maker, so I just made them. <laughs> it's easy. Um, I've got colored labels, um, all that, and as you can see, you know, I've labeled everything on my XR18, so I know where it goes. Um, using a pedal python to have everything go to the back. I basically unplug this, wrap it up, and it sits in the back of my, um, of the rack. So that's kind of how I do that. Um, so I don't really need to go over any sounds, but I just thought it's cool that, the, like I said, the, the negatives are kind of the, um, just the size of these, 
um, it wasn't a big deal to cut cut the hole was with the Dremel or make it if, if, if really what I would have had to do is just make a tiny little bit of space so I could get the, the XLR cables through there um, I don't want to have to do soldering and stuff myself so um, not a big deal though um, everything else has been great about it I do kind of wish that you could move the module to other places it would be nice to have it on the sides maybe or maybe even another place in the back but again um, other than that it is it's good it's heavy but it's not too heavy it's very solid I feel like I could stand on it jump on it um, it keeps all my stuff off of the floor there that was one of the things I thought about was I wanted to have maybe a flat board because of the feel you know the other thing is the feel of the wall of a wall pedal if it's on the floor it sounds feels more natural than when it's in an angle it's not a huge angle I think some more some other pedal boards have a greater angle but yet I could still fit um, the power supply and hide it underneath which was good I actually had the mimic under there before I had another expression pedal not um, not with the spring load and I had it next to it and the reason I took it off of there was because I found when I went to use this I actually hit that and I turned on my, my whammy pedal while I was turning on the wall and that didn't sound very good so um, I, I figured I really don't need it it was just kind of a, a nice to have it also was it brought it gave me the ability to bring the drop into a place where I could turn that off and off rather than having it up here the mimic stays on all the time the drop I need to turn off and on for songs and I really like the tuner um, in the Shure. It's, people have loved the new tuners in the Helix, but I still don't get along with it. Um, I never really complained about it. It's not a big deal. I was using um, the headstock TC uh, electronic headstock tuner, which is great. But this is a great way because I just have to hit one button. It makes it a lot easier. It's super accurate tuner. Um, it was really has really made a difference for me in the middle of a set being able to go, oh, boom, like that, and not have to tap and hold, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, hope you all like this. It was a little bit longer than I thought, but if you have any questions, just put them in the comments down below and I'll make sure um, I reply. Um, again, this this flange idea, everybody says it's a genius idea or whatever. I stole it from somebody else. Feel free to steal it. Um, another great idea is there is actually a, a tom mount um, that you can buy. It goes on like a kick drum and then you can you know because you, you put the pull of the tom in into it and tighten it and it's actually just a one-handed tightening thing so you don't have to have a separate allen key it just has the thing right on it that i thought that was a great idea um this what for me i think it was less than five bucks to buy all the parts i think now it'd be more like about eight or nine bucks and i've had it for a couple years um but anyway i love it makes my setup simple which is huge and less stuff to go wrong right none of these if something gets moved or whatever i pretty much know it i can see it and i can fix it so anyway please uh subscribe to my channel um that would really really help me actually um and uh, if you have like i said have any other questions or anything you want me to shoot a video about um let me know There's some things that are outside of my uh my knowledge but i'll do my best so thank you all